Bruce will be tested on their knowledge of the transport network today in an amazing race style event which is just about to begin. Metlink have put a lot of work into to, uh, the great transport race with the operators and it's really been about encouraging schools to think about public transport and young people not only to think about it from the environmental perspective but to learn how to use it and to feel really confident using it. Metlink's inaugural great transport race kicked off in Melbourne's west with an eclectic group of kids determined to make it through to the grand final. Teams receive vital tools to enhance their performance such as a race guide, a melway, timetables and a digital camera. For many, it is the first time they have experienced such a race. It is their opportunity to represent their school in a race that requires a cool head, careful planning and a whole bunch of team spirit. The Great Transport Race is designed to give kids between Year 7 and 10 a unique insight into Melbourne's public transport system and along the way have a whole heap of fun. Of course, with so many kids out there on the system, safety one, is paramount. always stay behind the yellow line. It's there to keep you safe. It's a five hour event. Uh, each of the pit stops that the teams go to uh, are worth a time bonus of either five minutes or ten minutes. And quite simply, by visiting pit stops, getting correct answers gives them time bonuses which are taken off that five hours. When all the teams have arrived back to HQ, the race coordinators tally the scores and the winners are announced. Western Peak Champion, Rosehill Secondary By the time the race hit the north, it was evident the competition was heating up. The headquarters for each heat are carefully selected, well-known community landmarks in close proximity to public transport. A 90-second highlight package of each team's performance was posted on the GTR hey, website. Lily J. She's uh, good at with her speed. This is Tim Eastwood. He knows the stuff. This, Joe's this enabled kids to log on for a sneak preview of their competition. First place. We just won the Northern Heat and uh, you city people watch out because here we come to the finals. It, it just came about really as part of our overall effort of engaging with, with school children and their teachers and, and helping kids learn about public transport before they get to that age of 17 and 18 when uh, traditionally kids tend to give up public transport and, and just become completely car reliant. The Eastern Heat brought a brand new level of competitiveness with the highest number of schools prepared to battle it out for a grand final berth. The Metlink team behind the race knew they were on a winning formula. Not only were the kids having fun, but they were gaining an invaluable understanding of Melbourne's public transport system. It was just a really interesting and fun competition and it was fun to do with your friends. Just the exposure to um, public transport and actually understanding that they can get around such a large space, I think that's been the biggest eye-opener for them. So popular was the whole concept that some schools elected to enter two teams into their heat. And in the case of Vermont Secondary College, both teams were skilled enough to make it into the final. We're the V-Town Chicks, we came second and we're going to knock off the boys in the grand final. We are V-Town, we are the winners of the Eastern Region and we are going to beat everybody else in the city. Yeah. Uh, we, we don't for a moment suggest that in a city like Melbourne people can suddenly stop using their cars altogether. That's just not feasible. Uh, but there is a way for us to use our cars more sensibly and to use public transport, walking and cycling uh, as, a, uh, as just as much a part of everyday life as the car can be. One heat remaining, the South. The broadest canvas so far, with pit stops spread from Moorabbin to St Kilda. Teams also began to understand that to be truly competitive, they needed to pick up as many time bonuses as they could. 
That meant taking up every challenge that was on offer. Lunch was a compulsory pit stop, providing a chance to refuel, recover and regroup. But not for long. Time bonuses were on offer for those who had the moves. In addition, a bonus 20 minutes was up for grabs for teams who used their cameras to film a short documentary of their team competing in the race. Despite the size of the course for the Southern Heat, the winning team made record time. The top five teams from each heat qualified for the grand final and with the anticipation of victory, potential for hero status and great prizes all up for grabs, the race was on. The grand final took place in Melbourne's CBD, a level playing field for teams from all points of the compass and the location for HQ, Federation Square's premier venue, BMW Edge. If we can capture the youth market in public transport, then it means you're really setting habits for, for life, for young people. They get to know public transport, they feel confident about it, they feel safe with it, they know how to navigate it, and they introduce other young people to it. So it actually means we have a whole generation of people using public transport, leaving cars at home when they can, to use public transport. The day started with style as the Victorian Police Youth Drum Corps Brass Band welcomed teams and dignitaries alike. Transport Minister Lynn Kosky would officially launch the race and her presence had an impact on everyone involved. With the formalities out of the way, the teams were primed and ready to race. By now, news of Metlink's great transport race had spread and media outlets from The Age newspaper to Channel 10's Totally Wild were keen to find out more. Well, we're here today filming a story on the great transport race. Transport around Victoria is very easy to access and today is the, that's what it's all about. Melbourne has so many great attractions, especially attractions that are right near the city centre. The sporting venues and the museums and the art galleries and so on. Uh, and compared to most other cities around uh, Australia and internationally, we're very lucky that so many of those attractions are in the CBD or very nearby. So to get the kids to appreciate that they can get to those venues independently, not just today, but any other time, uh, is definitely one of, the, uh, one of the aims that we try and promote. By lunch, the race coordinators had a first-hand account of how the teams were faring, and already the leaders were starting to emerge. Yes, if you study your maps, know where you're going, understand what you're doing, it's good. I'm, I'm not a big sporty bloke, don't go out and win state titles, so um, if we were to win this or get close to winning this, it would be a great achievement for me. As teams began arriving back at HQ, it was clear the race would go down to the wire. A total of 10 teams had managed to hit every pit stop and still make it back within the allotted time. As the scores were tallied, the teams took a well-earned break. Finally, the big moment arrived. Winning team, one hour, 23 minutes, is Caniva College. Midlink's inaugural Great Transport Race had been a phenomenal success. Every student that participated had great fun and along the way gained valuable experience and confidence in Melbourne's public transport system. For a school five hours out of Melbourne, it was an amazing effort. And now here's Mike with all of the weather data. And the race had had such an impact that Network 10 sent Mike Larkin to do his nightly weather report with the winning team. Well, the secret was probably um, studying a lot of the young time. Whether we can always restrict it to just the four heats in a final, we're not too sure. But we certainly hope it becomes an annual, annual event and uh, it becomes bigger and better.
Bye.